The noises have been in my family since the 1930s. It was a place that was home for us, even though we actually lived in Te too. Our hearts were totally out on those islands. Dad spent his childhood out there with every holiday he could. He talked about never ever having to go fishing from the dinghy, you just threw a hook and a piece of bait off the shore. Fishing for kingfish with just a hook and a piece of orange peel. He talked about the sea boiling with trevally and by the time, even when I was a kid, you never saw that and you hardly caught trevally. Even, even when mum first got to the noises, which was the late 50s, and dad used to make her row out and he'd put his rugby jersey on and plop over the side and pick crayfish up and dump them around her feet. My mum Marlene kept diaries from the early 70s right the way through until she passed away. Oh yeah, here's a good one. On the 15th of January 1973, the children made a tiny aquarium in a rock pool with all sorts of tiny fish they'd found. So the aquarium was this big rock pool which used to be just so full of life. You know, there were always crabs and all sorts of fish in there and lots of seaweed and kelp and sponge. It's still there but there's nothing in it. It's just empty. 9th of February 1987, rode over to Motuhora Papa. Huge flocks of petrels on the water and big schools of kahawai making the water boil too. I just remember seeing that sort of thing all the time and just loved being out in the dinghy and amongst all those birds and there was just so much life. 11th of January 1978, Saw four grey shags sitting on the rock by the big cave. They're so elegant, like city gentlemen in grey suits. So mum's diary entries about the grey shags, they're actually the spotted shag. As a child I still remember them. Maybe they were still there till around the 80s. And now you never see them. You do sometimes worry that your memories from back then might be flawed or that you might remember something that actually didn't happen, but the diaries actually confirm that the things that we did, that Rod and Zoe and I remember, they, they really did happen. And it really was like that. I'd love for my nieces and nephews and future generations to be able to stand on that beach. And I'd love for all of us to be able to have that wonderful feeling that would come if you could see recovery the noise is a special, but the whole Hauraki Gulf is so incredibly special, and it could be so beautiful. It would be wonderful if people who used the Gulf started to see it as a gift, and not a place that you just go to extract.